Hey, this is Terratoots with a quick tutorial on creating floating islands in Terrigen. There are several ways to approach this, including masking and displacing planes, and using a small second planet. Today, we'll be looking at an approach using displaceable cubes. As a fair warning going into this, floating islands in any form tend to push the boundaries of Terrigen's capabilities, so expect to see some strange behavior in displacements and populations. We'll start out here in the default scene, where I'm going to add a displaceable cube from the Objects tab with Add Object, Displaceable Object, Cube. Let's raise this up a little bit. And we're going to change the size to 10 by 15 by 10, which will give us a block that's a little taller than it is wide. We'll also round off the corners by using a round radius of 10. This gives us a pretty good starting shape. So let's dive into the internal network of the cube by clicking the plus button here. First, we'll get rid of this default shader and we're going to replace it with a power fractal. I like to start out by giving the island a more lumpy, irregular shape. And we can do that with a power fractal at a relatively large scale compared to the island. Here, I'll do 5, 15, and 3. You don't want to add too much detail here, just break up the uniform shape. I'm going to increase the displacement to 3, hit the random seed a few times, and that looks pretty good. Next, we're going to add some blockiness with a set of fake stone shaders. The first one here will be a scale of 1, a density of 0.6, and a tallness of 1. This will give some mid-sized stones covering the island. Next I'm going to add some bigger blocks by copying this, and we'll go with a scale of 5 this time, with a density of 1. On some of these larger blocks, it can help to bring down the pancake effect slider, which will help keep the rocks from bulging out and intersecting with each other. Finally, let's get some small scale rocks in here at 0.5 and a density of 0.6, so they aren't everywhere. I'm going to follow the fake stones up with some more displacement using a power fractal at a small scale. We'll do 0 0.5, 2, and 0 0.01. Small displacement, uh, 0.5. Bring the roughness down a little bit to 0.7 and the spike limit to 0.6. And just to mix things up, we'll set this Perlin ridges. Finally, I want to add some more small-scale surface roughness to make this look more like rock. We can do that with one more power fractal at a very small scale. We'll do 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.005, and we'll bring the displacement down to 0.01. Okay, so now our geometry is looking pretty rough and rocky. This is one possible set of geometry shaders, but hopefully you can see that there's basically infinite possible combinations of things you can try here to shape your rocks. Be sure to share if you find a good one. I'm going to color these with a generic rock color clip file, and we'll take a quick look at populating objects on our new island. I'm going to be using a population of small palms from XROG's Tropical Collection. First off, we'll copy the center of the population to the island by copying and pasting the island coordinates. Then we'll bring the population size down to 10, so it just covers the island. And we'll decrease the object spacing to 1.5. So we can pack more onto the small space. Now the key here is to come into the Anchor tab and change it from Sit on Terrain 
to sit on object. And we'll select our cube here. Now when we populate, instead of appearing on the ground below, our plants will appear on the rock. Using the Lean to Terrain setting under the Rotation tab can provide a nice effect as well. I find when doing this, it's common to get plants that are floating out a little bit away from the rocks. One way to deal with this is to come into the object inside the population and just put a little bit of a negative offset in the translate. You can also come back into the population and edit some of the individual instances. Like I said at the start, populations can get a little bit weird on these rocks. At this point, we can copy and paste our rock as desired, changing the size and position of the underlying cubes, adding more populations, some clouds, you name it. It can be tricky to get things just the way you want them, but it can be a cool effect in the end, so go have some fun with it.